A simple but yet powerful idea turns into a world-renowned brand. Nike's story showcases the difference between people that make it and those that don't. The famous American billion-dollar brand wasn't always this grand. How did Nike become a force in the sportswear industry? What did the brains behind the brand do differently from others? And sure you stick around to find out. Nike is a leading sportswear company that started out in the United States. Its global market dominance has made it a household name that everyone around the world appreciates and loves. Beyond its excellent products, Nike's iconic logo also helps it to stand out. The Swoosh Tech logo has increased in value and is currently worth $26 billion. Nike's Founders Nike was founded by sports coach Bill Bowerman and his former student, Phil Knight, in 1964, as at this time, the company was known as Blue Ribbon Sports. Bill Bowerman attended the University of Oregon, where he ran track and field. Bowerman played a vital role during the war by helping to negotiate a stand-down of German troops close to the Brenner Pass just days prior to the surrender of the German army. After serving in the army during World War II, Bowerman returned to the University of Oregon as a coach, where he had a highly successful career. He coached numerous Olympians, including Steve Profontaine, and his team won four NCAA championships. Phil Knight also served in the United States Army Reserve after graduating from the University of Oregon in 1959. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant as a distinguished military graduate and served on active duty for one year before continuing his service in the Army Reserve for an additional seven years. His military experience contributed a great deal in helping to shape his perspective and approach to business. After graduating from Stanford with a degree in business, Phil Knight went on to pursue an MBA at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. It was during this time that he reconnected with his former track and field coach at the University of Oregon, Bill Bowerman. The two shared a passion for athletics and innovation, and they became fascinated with the idea of creating better running shoes that could improve athletes' performance. Bowerman had already been experimenting with different designs for running shoes, drawing inspiration from a local cobbler who helped him create custom-made shoes for his athletes. He was particularly interested in creating a shoe with a more cushioned sole that would absorb shock and reduce the risk of injuries. Meanwhile, Phil Knight already had an idea of selling Japanese sports shoes. During his time at Stanford University, Phil Knight wrote a paper titled, Can Japanese Sports Shoes Do to German Sports Shoes What Japanese Cameras Did to German Cameras? In which, he argued that Japanese manufacturers could replicate the success of the Japanese camera industry in the sports shoe industry. At the time, German brands like Adidas and Puma dominated the athletic footwear market. But Knight saw an opportunity for Japanese companies to challenge their dominance by offering high-quality, affordable shoes. During a trip to Japan in 1963, Phil Knight visited the Onitsuka Tiger Factory in Kobe and was impressed with their high-quality, low-cost running shoes. He began to import the shoes to the United States and sold them out of his car at track meets and other events. He sent some samples of the shoes to Bill Bowerman, who was also impressed with their design and quality. Blue Ribbon Sports is formed Bowerman and Knight formed a partnership, with Bowerman providing design ideas and improvements for the shoes, while Knight focused on selling and marketing them. They founded Blue Ribbon Sports on January 25, 1964, with a handshake and an initial investment of $500 each. The company initially operated out of Knight's car and then out of a small storefront in Santa Monica, California. With the $1,000 that the founders invested, they were able to hit a sales figure of $8,000 within a year. But the very next year, it grew into more than double, $20,000. As it turned out, Bill Bowerman was the perfect choice Phil had made for a business partner. The exponential rise in sales resulted from Bill's reach in the market and the sports world. 
Bill Bowerman knew the right strategies that would help increase their sales. To make BRS more popular, Bowerman published a book in 1965. The title of the book is The Necessity and Benefits of Jogging. This helped in raising the sales of BRS shoes for jogging and running. With the Bill's fantastic ideas, Cortez was launched into the mainstream line of sportswear. He also kept sending ideas back to Onitsuka Tiger to make improvements in the shoe building process. This was another reason why the brand won the heart of the people. It was constantly improving. As jogging shoes became a popular trend with Bill's book on jogging, BRS shoes demand increased. At one point, the demand was so high that it crossed the supply figures. Blue Ribbon Sports continued to import and sell Onitsuka Tiger shoes. But Knight and Bowerman eventually began designing their own shoes, including the iconic Knight Cortez and the Waffle Trainer. The company's focus on innovation, design, and marketing helped to establish Nike as one of the leading athletic footwear brands in the world. A new name is coined by Jeff Johnson. Jeff Johnson was the first full-time employee of Blue Ribbon Sports, and he played a key role in the company's growth and success. He worked in the company's first storefront in Santa Monica, California, and later moved to the company's headquarters in Oregon. Johnson was responsible for many of the company's early marketing campaigns and was also instrumental in the development of the Nike brand. In 1971, when the company was preparing to launch its own line of shoes, Johnson suggested the name Nike after the winged Greek goddess of victory. The name was immediately well received by Knight and the other executives at the company, and it has since become one of the most recognizable and iconic brand names in the world. The Waffle Soul Idea In 1965, Bill Bowerman suggested a new shoe design to the Tiger Company. This unique design had a firm rubber outsole, soft sponge rubber in the forefoot, and cushioned inner sole, which provided all the support needed by runners. The shoe also featured Bowerman's innovative waffle sole, which he developed over breakfast one morning while brainstorming on how to give the running shoes more traction. Looking at the grooves on the waffle he was eating, Bowerman imagined how it would look like if it was inverted. To test his idea, Bowerman used the waffle iron. He poured melted urethane into it. His first attempt failed because he did not apply an anti-stick agent on the iron. Nevertheless, it was a great start. Bowerman finally got his desired waffle trainer sole. After repeating the experiment a couple of times, the success of Bowerman's design gave birth to the Nike Cortez, originally known as the Tiger Cortez, which turned out to be a huge success in the world of athletic footwear. However, the success of the shoe was not without controversy. A legal battle ensued between Blue Ribbon Sports and Tiger over the rights to the design. Despite the split between the two companies, the design continued to thrive, with both Nike and Asics selling their own versions of the Cortez. It's worth noting that the Nike Cortez has become a cultural icon beyond its athletic roots. With its sleek design and association with the hip-hop and streetwear scenes, the shoe's enduring popularity is a testament to the timeless appeal of good design. The story of this world-class company will not be complete without talking about the Nike logo, which featured a stylized swoosh design, was created by graphic designer Carolyn Davidson in 1971. Davidson was a student at Portland State University and was hired by Nike to design a logo for the company. She was paid $35 for her work, which has since become one of the most recognizable and iconic logos in the world. After the company had grown to become more popular, Davidson was given more remuneration for her effort. Nike has indeed been involved in several controversies over the years, ranging from labor and human rights violations in its factories to accusations of promoting unhealthy body standards through its advertising campaigns. However, it is also true that Nike has managed to navigate these controversies and emerge stronger, thanks to its strategic communication and marketing efforts. 
Nike's story is undoubtedly an inspiration for many entrepreneurs and dreamers, as it demonstrates the importance of staying true to one's values and beliefs, even in the face of adversity. Which part of Nike's journey inspired you the most? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.